How's it going everybody? So today we're going to go over a string based problem called add strings. And this is a problem asked at Facebook, Oracle, Amazon, and Microsoft. So the description says given two non-negative integers, num1 and num2 represented as a string, return the sum of num1 and num2. And so the biggest note of this problem is that we must not use any built-in big integer library or convert the inputs to integer directly. So to solve this problem, we have to use the strings that were given to actually compute the sum and return the result. So let's say we start off with two strings, 2,859 and 293. We need to add these two strings together without converting them directly to integers. So we can't use any functions that are inside of the standard library of whatever language we're using. We can't use those functions. To understand how to compute the sum between two characters, let's jump over to the ASCII table. So if we look at this section right here, we can see that we have numbers zero through nine. And if you look at the leftmost column, which is the decimal column, starting at the zero character, that is represented as number 48. And then all the way going up to the character nine, that's represented as decimal number 57. So with that in mind, we can actually compute the difference between two characters and we can get an actual integer value. So let's say we wanted to convert the character one to the actual integer value one without calling a function on it. What we can do is subtract the character zero from character one and that will give us a result of one. The reason why is because if we look at character one, that corresponds to the decimal number 49. So one is equal to 49 minus the character zero that's represented as 48 in decimal. So 49 minus 48 is equal to one. So as you can see, these statements are the same because the characters have underlying decimal values. So that's actually how we're going to solve this problem. We can convert every character that we're looking at into an actual integer value. So now that we understand how to convert the actual characters to integers, we can start on the problem. So we're gonna need two different pointers, one looking at our first string and another looking at our second string. So when we normally add up two numbers, we move from right to left to sum up those numbers. So we're gonna do the same for the strings. So we're gonna have one pointer starting at the very end of our first string, we can call this I, and then we're gonna have a second pointer starting at the end of our second string, and we can call this J. We're also gonna have two more variables to solve this problem. The first one is our carry. When we are normally summing up integers, we have carry numbers that we move to the next position when it gets over the value 10. So we have to make sure that we perform the same logic and know when we need to add a carry to the next position or not. And then we're also going to have a variable called our result. Result is going to be a string that we eventually return from our function. So if we look at our first characters that we're looking at, we're looking at the character nine and the character three. And if we subtract it from character zero, both of these characters, we will get a value of nine and a value of three. And with that, we can just perform normal addition. So nine plus three is 12. And what that means is we will have a carry moving to our next position. So in order to determine if we set our carry to a one or not, is if we have a leftover after the value 10. So all we have to do is divide the number that we sum up by 10, which would be one. So that means that this value is now our new carry. So our carry is set to one, but we still need to determine which number is the remainder after we determine if we have a carry or not. So if we did 12, mod 10, that's the remainder after dividing by 10, that would be a value two. So nine plus three, we have a two, and then we have one is our carry, which moves to the next position. So the division determines if we have a carry, 
and then the modulus determines which number is going to be in our result. So now we're looking at the character 5 and the character 9, so we need to sum up these numbers, so 9 plus 5, but remember we have a carry that we just set from the previous calculation, so we also need to add 1 to this result, so that would be a total of 15. And like before, we're going to perform the division of it, so 15 divided by 10. Once again, it's 1. Our carry is already 1, so we don't need to do anything. And then we're going to perform our modulus, 15 mod 10, which is 5 left over. So 5 is in this place, and we're going to have another carry go to the next position. Once again, we're looking at character 8, character 2. We're going to do 8 plus 2 plus our carry, which is 1 currently. That totals to 11. 11 divided by 10, we have another carry of 1, 11 mod 10, we have a 1 left over, so 1 takes the position here. So now the last position we're looking at, we have our I pointer looking at character 2, but our J pointer is no longer looking at anything. So this is just an extra edge case we're going to have to consider when we are writing the solution. Our strings may not be the same length. so. In the scenario that our pointer is not looking at a character, we can just say that that pointer is looking at the number 0. So if we do 2 plus 0, this is representing our J pointer, plus our carry, our carry is currently set to 1, that would be a total of 3. So we do 3 divided by 10, that would be 0. So now our carry is going to be set to 0. And then we do 3 mod 10, and that would be 3. So 3 takes the final position that we have, and then we add that to our result. The final step is we can see that our result is actually backwards, because we were iterating from right to left and appending from left to right. So we need to reverse this string once we are finished looping over both of these strings. So then we will get 3,152. So we're given two strings, num1 and num2. We need to add them together and return a string, which will be our result. So the first thing we want to do is create two pointers, i and j. So in i, this pointer will start at whatever num1.length minus 1 is. It is always going to start at the very end. So num1.length minus 1. And likewise for j, it's going to start at num2.length minus 1. And then we're also going to need an integer carry, because as we're iterating, iterating over these strings, we need to determine if we have a carry or not. So we can say int carry, and this can just be initialized to 0. And then we also need to eventually return a string, so we're going to need to have a variable to keep track of that. So we can use a string builder for this, and we can call this result. And now we want to loop over the strings. So we can say while i is greater than negative 1 or j is greater than negative 1. The reason why it's an or is because if they are not the same length, we still want to iterate over both of the strings. So in the scenario where i is either less than or equal to negative 1, or j is less than or equal to negative 1, we still want to compute the sum for the rest of the digits. So now we need to convert the current characters that we're looking at to actual integer values. So we can say int digit 1. We need to check if i is actually greater than negative 1 or not, because if it is, then that's good because we can just convert the character to its own integer value. However, if it's not, that means we have exhausted looking through all of those characters and we can just default it to zero. So if i is greater than negative one, then we can say num1 char at i minus the character zero. If that's not true, then we just default it to zero. And we're going to do the same thing for digit 2. So if j is greater than negative 1, num2 char at j minus the character 0, default it to 0. And now we need to compute the sum. So we can say int the sum is d1 
plus d2 plus whatever our carry is up to this point. And now we need to add in the modulus to our result, right? So we could say result dot append sum mod 10. This will give us the very last number. And then finally, we need to compute our carry, which we know we just need to use division. So we can say carry is equal to sum divided by 10. And this will always be a 0 or a 1. And now we just need to move our pointers backwards because after we do these calculations, we no longer need to look at these digits. So we can decrease i and then decrease j. And after that, we still have to handle one extra edge case. Let's say we had two numbers, 99, and we were trying to add it to 1, right? This would obviously equal 100. However, in our current code, if we were to have these two numbers as input, our carry would end up being a 1 when we come out of this while loop. So our result, if we had these two strings as input, would just be 0, 0 up to this point. We also need to handle if we have a carry as we are coming out of this while loop. So we can say if our carry is equal to 1, then we need to add it. So result.append1. And now all we need to do is reverse our result and convert it to a string. So we can say return result.reverse dot to string. So let's just make sure this code works. And there we go. Our time complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the bigger length between num1 and num2, because we will have to loop over all of the characters of both of our strings. And then our space complexity is also going to be big O of n, because on line 5, we have to create a string builder that we eventually return from our result. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I hope it was helpful for you. I'll see you guys in the next one.